There's a new sense of Hoya paranoia on the hilltop. Dave Yurick's Georgetown Hoyas have proven to be a thorn in the side of Roy Simmons and his Syracuse Orangemen. Last year, the Hoyas beat Syracuse two years ago in their last meeting at the Dome. The Orangemen scored four unanswered goals late in the game to squeak past Georgetown. Syracuse and Georgetown is next. On the right wing, with a streak of speed, Powell comes on in, fans on their feet, SCORE! Oh my goodness, what a move by the Carthage Comet! Top top, good ball movement by oh, great save. Hobart, and a terrific save by Gebhardt. Oh, that was dead on. The Orangemen beat number two, John Hopkins, 14-13. Super Sports presents, from the Carrier Dome, Syracuse University Lacrosse. Today, the Georgetown Hoyas ranked eighth in the country, visiting the Orangemen, who are ranked sixth. The Hoyas come in with a record of nine and three. Syracuse is nine and two. Hello, everybody. I'm Rob King, along with Dale Drypolcher. And Dale, when you think Syracuse Georgetown, you think basketball. But this lacrosse rivalry has really developed into a strong one. Well, after last year's loss down at Georgetown, I think a lot of people give this game a lot more credibility, and they thought before the season it was going to be a big game. It's even bigger as the season has kind of strung itself out. And two of the top players in the country for each team, beginning with Greg McGavra for Georgetown. Well, he's got ju just three points fewer than Casey Powell, so he can really put it in the hole and hand out the assists. He's 5'8", 180 pounds. He's got 37 goals, 26 assists, and he's actually their go-to guy. So you watch McGavra, and let's see who matches up with him defensively. Of course, they've got the same problem Georgetown does, because on the other side, We've got, of course, Casey Paul, a legend, the guy who is uh, just going to be missed here a lot. 39 goals, 27 assists, first in the nation in points per game, and a guy who makes everything happen. And, of course, he's got a great supporting cast, uh, his brother and uh, Matt Kutaya. So there's going to be a lot of fireworks. It's going to be a great game. Now, we know Syracuse is going to the NCAA tournament. They are a lock to get in there. They're hoping with a win today that they can advance to perhaps a, a bye in the first round. Now, as far as Georgetown is concerned, Coach Dave Yurick says maybe his team needs to win this game just in order to get themselves in into the NCAA tournament. I don't feel real comfortable about our playoff situation right now. You know, I'm, I'm sure we're on the bubble like a lot of other teams that are kind of waiting to see how games developed this last weekend. And I think Syracuse is trying to do what they can to get uh, that first week by. You know, and for us, we're trying to get in the dance, and for them, they're just trying to uh, sit the first uh, round out. Syracuse fighting for a first round bye perhaps. As far as Georgetown's chances go, Roy Simmons said they are an awfully good team. They played a very tough schedule. He doesn't buy what Dave Yurick is saying. He thinks Georgetown is in the NCAA tournament right now. Personally, I think the, the season they've had and, and who they've run close with and, and who they've beaten uh, is important enough to be heard from at least in the top 12. And uh, regardless of the outcome of the Syracuse-Georgetown game, uh, I definitely think Georgetown is, is ready. Dale, the rankings are important. How about the power ratings? Well, you can look at this. It includes things like strength of schedule. Georgetown at 9, Syracuse at 6. It gives you a pretty good idea just how uh, these teams are ranked. And Syracuse at 6, maybe a little bit uh, more powerful than Georgetown, but uh, they're going to be ready. It's going to be a great matchup. There is a sense of desperation for both teams. Georgetown thinks they need a win to get themselves into the NCAA tournament. Syracuse looking for a win to perhaps get a first round bye. Georgetown and Syracuse, the lacrosse rivalry, is next. Syracuse Lacrosse is brought to you in part by Brian Lacrosse. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome, Georgetown, and Syracuse just about ready to get underway. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Georgetown Hoyas. We talked about Greg McAver, their All-American attack. Andy Flick also has 30 goals. Scott Yurick has, Scott Yurick has scored 26 goals this year, so they are a talented group. Gavel Peters and Hubschman are the midfielders. Papa, Colbert, Bell, and Hole in goal. And Brian Hole is a top goaltender. A save percentage of 61%, almost 62%. So Hole can really get it done between the pipes for the Hoyas. Now, meanwhile, for the Syracuse Orangemen, take a look at who they will be trotting out there today. Ryan Powell, Casey Powell, Devin Tarcangelo, Kataya Burns, and Vanderpool on defense for the Orangemen. Rule, Glatzel, and Sheedy. Jason Gephardt in goal for the Syracuse Orangemen. And Gephardt has been terrific of late 
at 56% save percentage, really not indicative of the way he's been playing recently. He was brilliant against UMass and also terrific Dale against Hobart. Absolutely. Let's list the officials too. Jim O'Hara is the referee, Terry Cullen, the umpire, field judge, Nate Foote, and the bench official will be Kurt Lingenfelter, and they're going to see and ref a great game. I think it's going to be a great matchup. Everybody's excited, Rob. A lot of fans here, and I think they're pumped for Syracuse to take on the Hoyas. The Orangemen lead the series 2-1. to one. It's a very recent rivalry, but Syracuse-Georgetown always has some magic to it. The Hoyas also won last year, so they know they can beat Syracuse. Face-off underway, and Georgetown wins it. They retreat all the way back to Brian Hull, and he'll set the offense for the Hoyas. Face-off's going to be a key in this game. Matt Pappas is a very good one for the Hoyas. He is the Hoyas' all-time leading rusher in football. Good, strong guy, so he is uh, going to be a factor, perhaps, in this game. Hoyas haven't cleared yet. Now they've got time. All they do is clear the restraining line, and they can stay in this area for a long period of time, but he went back beyond the restraining line. So once you clear the restraining line, the 10-second rule, you can kind of stay in that never-never land for a while. And now there's going to be a flag down. Somebody said something to the official. Yeah. And Kataya raised his hands uh, already triumphantly, perhaps a little prematurely. That was a great play by Ryan Powell, putting the pressure on Hole and making him retreat. What they did was somebody threw the ball down, and they called it delay of game, I believe. So that, uh, that's going to be a 30-second penalty already. Uh, right after they take the face off, they uh, go back inside the restraining line and now get a penalty. So Syracuse man up with, gee, uh, what, uh, 30, 30 seconds, seconds gone. Game, right, yeah. yeah. This is Ryan Powell now working it around the Georgetown zone. Down to D'Arcangelo as you look at the man up statistic for the Orangemen this year. Working it around the perimeter. Here's Ryan Powell, fake the shot. Vanderpool comes in, shoots off the crossbar. Oh, Syracuse thought they had one there. In fact, Kataya had raised his hands. He thought it was a goal. Now here come the Hoyas. Good pass, and they're on the move. The Hoyas, this is Henneman. Mike Hennehan bringing it back, and now they'll try to set their offense. This is Greg McCavra, one of the best players in the country, being dogged by Sheedy. McCavra looking for some room, trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Quick pass. Snuck through. The Hoyas pick up the ground ball. Nice job. As soon as he got doubled, he looked at the crease and dumped it off to Peters, but Peters got knocked down, so they're going to restart again. But they looked as soon as the double came. What do we got here? Shoulder problem. Uh, a uh, equipment. No, actually face mask. They yeah, got it looked it. like that pass might have handcuffed him a little bit because it was a good pass, but maybe just you know in tight like that. Sometimes it gets in a bad spot and you can't make the catch. But that uh, McCaver really set that up well. He, 37 goals. He also got 26 assists. Yeah, he so throws much, a lot of assists that way, too. Yeah, much like Casey Powell, very unselfish. The Hoyas back at even strength now. 13-15 remaining in the first. We are scoreless. This is the Hoyas' first foray into Orangeman territory. Coming off the screen. Quick shot. Gephardt with a save. Oh, Jason Gephardt has been fantastic. Turns aside Greg Hubsman there. He is, uh, as you mentioned, has a reputation for playing his best lacrosse late in the season. Vanderpool can't get the handle. Nobody around him, so he has time. Oh. He didn't think he had time, though. Kind of rushed it a little bit. And finally, yep, finally Irish got it. I think it's safe to assume they won't do a stick check on Irish Vanderpool. Here's Ryan Powell, the cutting Kataya, but knocked away. So far, a defensive struggle. And here comes Ryan in again. And behind the pack pass by Hall. Kataya working on the defense. It comes loose. Papa couldn't control, and it's going to go back to Syracuse. Boy, Syracuse, we've seen this so much the last couple games. Just tremendous pressure in the defensive end. It starts, watch the, the, the pass. Holes covered. He said, what am I going to do? He's going to go behind the back. Great pass, great athleticism. And then they tried to get it out, but Kutai did a great job of holding back number eight, uh, Burke, and uh, it went out of bounds, and Syracuse gets the ball. There's Casey Pound, though, with teams not being able to clear on the defensive end. Syracuse has really created more opportunities for themselves. Just another way to get their high-octane offense on the field. Here's Casey Powell looking, winds, fire, save by Hole. So each goalie with a nice save already in the game. Here's Casey going to work. He's going to draw a penalty flag. Doesn't like the call. He's got it anyway, though. Now they the want to keep it in the box. Offense. Yeah, want to keep it in the box. You want to get your free shot off. If they go out of the box or the ball goes on the ground, oh, as there it, it goes. Yep. As Andy Flick was double teamed, lost it, and they're going to hit him on a penalty. Hold. We'll see how we'll sort it out. So, 30 seconds. 
And the Hoyas have a man up. Anytime watch, he's going to come around with him. He impeded progress at all. And he kind of hooked his shoulder right there. And you can see that he definitely impeded his progress. He held him. So it will be a 30-second uh, man up. So we've had two man up opportunities here very quickly in this first quarter. This one for the Hoyas, the first for Syracuse, they did not convert on. 11.35 remains in the first. And Georgetown and Syracuse are scoreless so far. Season man up statistics here for the Hoyas, right around 33%. The Hoyas looking, trying to crack the Syracuse zone defense. Working it around, good job of checking. And uh, now Syracuse extending the defense a little bit. Shot high and wide. It was a cooker by Tyler Gamble, but well off the mark. Ackerman, nice job 26 did of covering. And uh, as the, they made the pass out, Ackerman still had his man the whole way. Two seconds left on the uh, man up. Ground ball's early, 5-2 to two in favor of Georgetown. Let's see, they've got two seconds left. And one, now it's even. And here's one of the problems. Everybody's got to pick up a man. They do that pretty well. Sometimes that can be confusing. But uh, Sheedy one-on-one. -on -one. With McCabra. McCabra gets by him. But Sheedy with a nice check knocked a stick right out of his hand. Now Sheedy looking to scoop it up. Still loose ball. The Hoyas pick it up. Oh, boy. He didn't see McCabra alone. Greg Peters, when he picked it up, had McCabra right in front of Jason Gephardt. Never saw him. Now McCabra's got it back. Going to work on Sheedy again. McCabra spins to the inside. Sheedy tries to check again. Gephardt there for the save. Loose ball and corralled by Matt Alexander. Here comes Alexander. Working up the right sideline. Spins around. Long pass up to Sheedy, and Sheedy will carry it into the zone for the Orangemen. He's going to get himself the in the corner. Yeah. He, needs a, he needs a break there. He got one from Kataya. Kataya came to the ball there. And here comes Matt Kataya. Looking, moving in, checked hard. Got it back. Boy, I don't know how he fought through that without losing the ball. Yeah, it is amazing what they do sometimes. Now they're going to go back to a set offense. Uh, they get some people on and off. That's a low goes off. And Stuart Smith getting some early action yep. for Syracuse. He got some uh, some action last week, or last game, I should say. He's a sophomore. Scored his first goal of the year against Massachusetts. Ryan Powell now. Syracuse continuing to work it around the perimeter. That uh, John Matthews, who we saw before the game, chatted with him for a moment. Good natured about the fact that I kept going. Vice versa. Casey Powell now. 920 remains. No one has scored yet. Powell spins. Quick dump pass. Oh boy, that was a good looking pass. And once again, it handcuffed Brian Soliday. And now the Hoyas come back. Gone nearly six minutes without a goal. This is flick as Georgetown now will reset their offense. To get some substitutions out there. And one more waiting. And now they've got their offense set as Dan Shea will join the attack. This is Mike Corey. Normally wears 33. Was drying out his jersey and burned it. Burned a hole in it. So he's number 38 today. Dave, you're spending some time telling me about the jersey problems they've had. Oh, nice move. Here comes Corey. And he shoots and score. No, it's on, on the back of the net. I beg your pardon as Gephardt makes the save. I saw it in the back of the net. It was on top of it, though. Now here comes John Matthews. Matthews in. Oh, off the melon of Kataya. Unnecessary roughness there. On, and then, uh, it's going to be on Kataya? Yeah. Kataya took a shot in the head and got another one. Kataya ran running into Andy Bell when the play was over. Quick little flip pass and oop, right off the melon. And, and now there's the shot, but watch what happens. Afterwards, we probably won't see it in the replay, Kutai hit somebody with his stick on the way out. I think they're both going to be down a man. So they'll be even, but... Yep. Both get a minute as we take a look at this. Well, Kutai just should have done nothing because, watch, here's the, uh, the thing you thought looked like a goal. Went just on the outside of the pipe, and it rested in the net. It looked for all intents and purposes of being a goal, but it was not. Mr. Lingefelter explains what happened. Actually, had Kutaya not done anything, they'd be a man up for a minute. But he slashed him back on the way out, so both of them are out for a minute. And it will be the Hoyas ball. Casey Powell out there looking to, as you see, Matt Kataya out for a minute. Trying to get some pressure. 
about the Hoyas. The Hoyas just throw it in fairly easily. Here they come on the attack now. They had an unsettled situation, but oh, they still have them. McCaffrey moving in. Nice check from behind as his shot goes high and wide. That was Marshall Abrams getting a stick on him. Abrams, two goals and an assist last week, playing some good defense, the big stick mini. Just got his stick in the way, and he's going to come out and pick up as uh, they look to McCaver early and uh, Sheedy on him man on man. Well, we expected a close game. I'm not sure we expected it to be scoreless midway, nearly midway through the first period. Boys moving in, now another shot goes high and wide from Greg Peters. You know, you want to get the shots out when, when you're, when you're even though you're both down a man, you're playing even, it opens the field up. There are two less bodies, and so sometimes you can, uh, you know, space things out and get a little better view of the goal. Peter's trying to go to work on Matt Alexander. Alexander has just played terrific defense. I mean, he has been stifled. And he has a great move. He just pushes people away from that cage. But off Peter's again there. Oh, it's even, or even. Loose ball. Marshall Abrams looking to scoop it up. Does oh, come away with oh, it. Carries in. Some fancy stick work for Marshall Abrams being checked from behind. There goes his stick. Loose ball. Going to be a race for it. Scooped up by the Hoyas. Big hit. They just have to toss, they have to toss it in. That was Huffman. Georgetown uh, finally regains possession here. This is Huffman. Huffman just picked up by rule. They had a little question about who was picking up. Who and they just got it straightened out now and Chidi right back where he's been with on McCaver. McCaver trying to go to work now. Cradling coming in. Quick pass on low and a behind the back attempt. No good by Tyler Gamble. Gamble thought he had the shot. It went a little wide. A good check at the end on McCaver, but he made the nice pass in the crease. Watch McCaver right there. There's the jump. That's the look. Just a little bit off. Ball down to the Loose ball in front. Yeah, Jason Gephardt comes away with it. And here come the Orangemen. Matt Alexander carrying in. Alexander looks, will flip to Vanderpool, and will head off. Ira now passing down to Ryan Powell over to Casey Powell. Syracuse making some substitutions. Tim Burns coming on the field. Quick shot saved by Hole as he stuffed Casey Powell. Boy, the six-minute mark, nine minutes now without a goal. Oh, my God. Oh, that was, time uh, out. Yeah, that was a good call. Time <laughs> out by Georgetown there as uh, Dave York sent something that uh, he didn't like. Going to be a short timeout here as we take a look at Casey Powell's last effort to get in. Well, Powell's, as you know, he's got a lot of moves, and he makes the move on Bell. And we'll see what happens. He takes the shot. Hole right there. Now, Hole, uh, he's a local kid. FM, Fayetteville Manley's High School. A junior, a left-handed goalie. And uh, I talked to him before the game, and he said, if they're going to really put the pressure on us, he said, they're going to run. He said, I feel good. And uh, he looked good right there. Did a nice job of stopping Powell one-on-one. -on -one. So, Hole having a good game. Now, usually we concentrate on things that are happening in the offensive end. And after all, that's where goals are scored. And we also talk about the goalies, Hole and Gephardt playing well. But Roy Simmons says it's not necessarily in the offensive zone where the game is decided. Ground balls is a big part of the game. They always say that games are won between the restraining stripes, not inside the box. And that's partially true that the game is won in the midfield and it's, it's won in the middle of the field where the big battle goes on for the ball. Take a look at the ground ball statistics. Roy Simmons was talking about Georgetown 8 to 6 leading in that department. Quick pass into the slot. Oh, Syracuse doing a nice job converging defensively. And they come away with it. And they move on to the attack. Joe Seglia carrying it in with a big stick. Here comes Seglia on the move. He will now flip to Ryan Powell, and Seglia will head off. Got to give Josh Rule. They're giving him a round of applause. He did a great job of, of covering and then put that big six foot five body, put him to the turf. Ball knocked out in the Vanderpool and company back in midfield change and trying to get some points on the board. Burns and D'Arcangelo step in there with Vanderpool. Ryan Powell, Casey Powell, and Matt Kataya. Here's Casey Powell now. He's being guarded by Anderson Bell. Bell is one of the players that's going to be taking a shot at Casey Powell. 6'3", 225, a big guy. We saw him walking around before the game, and he's an imposing-looking figure. Yes, he is. He looks like, a, looks like a football player, not for Georgetown, but for Syracuse. 
Here comes Ryan Powell now moving in, looking for a pass. Nobody there. Now Kataya cuts it, he shoots it, he scores! Matt Kataya, first goal of the game for the Orangemen. And for Kataya, his 29th goal of the season. I'll tell you what's interesting there, there were two guys open. He did not make the assist on the first look right there. See, he saw a cutter, now he made it to the second man. He was looking for D'Arcangelo, he held the ball, went for the second guy. Watch him, watch D'Arcangelo, gonna cut across on the left side of the screen. Powell doesn't go to him, nope. He goes to the second guy right there, and that's Kutaya, and Kutaya put it in. So it's a one nothing game at this point, and Kutaya stays hot. Had five goals last game, and Syracuse up with the faceoff, and the man we just talked about has the ball behind the cage. Syracuse getting some balanced scoring in recent weeks. Uh, Brian Powell had four goals in that game against Tobar. Casey content to dish it out. He had two goals and five assists against the Hoyas. Here's Tim Burns now. Burns to Ryan Powell. Ryan will retreat and try to reset the offense. Boy, that was a great pass behind the play. So tough for a goaltender to be moving one way, and then the pass comes behind him and, uh, to try to react. Quick dump pass, low and a oh my goodness! Kataya falling backwards, unleashed a low rocket, beating Hole, scoring his 30th goal of the season, giving Syracuse a 2-0 lead. Ryan Powell's job on this is to draw the double team. Watch what happens when he senses the double team. Watch the blue jersey come. Somebody's open. He makes a low pass just to the right of Kutaya, who takes it and sends it right back on a subway route to Brian Hall, who couldn't get his stick on it, and that's going to be goal number two, 4.02 left in the first quarter. Kutaya falling away. And just was able to get so much on it. Hoyas win the face off here. Looking to go on the attack. This is Steve Iorio. I think they want him to give the ball up and get rid of it. He's their second faceoff man. We talked about Matt Pappas earlier. Iorio will, uh, will flip it over and uh, he took a peek. You can't blame him for taking a peek offensively and then uh, yeah, right. And then he heads off the field. Uh, well, Tyler Gamble has it now. If you just run off, it gets to be predictable also, and then uh, you don't want that to happen. So Jeff Lohauer picks up his replacement, as you said, 26 in the game. Uh, Hubschman. Hubschman, a fine player. Honorable mention All-American last year. This is Greg Peters now with the ball. La Jolla is getting a lot more balanced scoring this year. That was something Dave Yurick talked about and uh, was extremely pleased with on his team. Syracuse jumping out, quick double team by Lowe. Lowe dropped his stick, went back and picked it up again. He's got to find his man. Net, uh, playing man oh, to man. Good Another check. huge check. Oh my goodness, Syracuse, that was Jeff Lowe. Syracuse has just turned it up defensively. The last couple of games, they've been magnificent in the defensive zone. Jeff Lowe, six foot 190, a receiver on a football team, did a good job. They get it back. Yeah, that was close. Zed Sheedy did a great job of it. Now Syracuse six for seven on their clear attempts as we have a whistle and a stop and play. Offside, I, I believe, against Syracuse. Oh, it's Jeff Cordisco heading off as we've talked about in past games. He and Chris. The other uh, brothers on this team with the pals. I just mentioned what a good job Sheedy did, though. He did a super job of a poor pass, got down and started it, then Syracuse had a procedure call, but he could have uh, lost the ball, given up an easy goal. So Sheedy, good job for number 25. Hoya is looking to get something going here on offense. Double team, long shot. Oh, get oh. Hard. Boy, the Hoyas thought they might have had one as it snuck out of his stick and rolled along the ground, but Gephardt pounced on it quickly, making another save, and Syracuse on the attack, up to Ryan Powell. Shoots and stoned by Hole. what a save. Back the other way. Kataya chasing. Moves into the defense, his own lost his stick, though. Now the Hoyas will go on the attack as Greg Peters moves in. Quick pass. Rule knocked it Broken down. up. What a play by Rule because his man had beaten him. The rule reacted quickly. Long pass ahead to Casey Powell. Here come the Orange on the attack. Powell moving in, puts on a move, comes in, shoots and scores. Casey Powell making it 3 0 Syracuse. Boy, talk about end to end action and a fast break opportunity for the Orangemen. Long outlet pass from Gephardt up to Casey Powell. Powell knows what to do with it from there. Well, you know, Gephardt knew exactly what to do with it, too. He looked and saw everybody covered on the short game, the short release, so he just took it and unleashed it up the field, not before he makes a good save. Now watch the ball. All it's got to do is cross that line. It had eyes 
That was about an inch away from being a goal, and then he just turned it up and made the long pass to Casey Powell, takes a left-handed shot and beats Hole for a 3 nothing lead, 139 left first quarter. Well, we had Matt Kataya getting a landmark goal earlier, his 30th for Casey, his 40th. That's a lot. 40's a lot of goals. Absolutely. Unnecessary roughness call. We'll take you back for one more look at the goal from Casey Powell. Nice bounce as Gephardt probably should get an assist on that. Now Casey has provided many memories for the Orangeman fans. I'll tell you what, I mean, if you're a defensive, you see Casey Powell getting the ball at the yellow stripe, midfield stripe, and as Ryan Powell is off for a minute for unnecessary roughness, that must be like watching Jordan come down in a break in the NBA. Yeah. You, know, you know you don't have much of a chance to stop him. Or being a defensive back, you know you got turned around you know, in the NFL. Another man up opportunity for the Hoyas. It's a minute. Hoyas working around his zone defense for Syracuse. Now trying to go on the attack. McCaffrey. Oh, oh, what a save by Gephardt. Jason Gephardt, a tremendous save, stoning Andy Flick in front. Loose ball now. Syracuse has got it. They'll move on the attack. This is Matt Alexander. Down low, and Casey Powell scores again. Syracuse, a man down, makes the transition quickly from defense to offense, and Powell scores again, and it's 4-0 Syracuse. Well, they have taken Georgetown right out of the game, running and gunning, and if Brian Holt told me before the game, he knew they were going to run, and there's not much you can do about it. There's the whole sequence here, the ball down. Watch, Gebhardt made one save. They got it back up. Fast break, transition game, and a nice one-hopper for Powell. And that is going to make it 4 0 with 102 left. And we went most of the first quarter without any scoring. And it so often happens in lacrosse bang, 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 bang. You got four goals. And that's uh, so how often happens with Syracuse. Pappas and Deniker fighting for it. Still loose. Still loose. Teams in a scrum down there. Looks like a rugby game. I'm going to get a call here. Got yeah. a push. As Pappas wound up on the ground. You could call one of those. Just about any time you wanted to yeah. in that situation, and that, but he made a good call on that. Syracuse up by four, 48 seconds left. Wants to make sure they got everybody picked up as Georgetown fires the ball and takes it behind the cage. On the attack, this is Peter Valapec. Boy, his shot, not, his pass knocked down by Rule. Nothing coming easy offensively for the Boyas. And when they've gotten in there and had a good scoring opportunity, Gephardt has been up to the challenge. Shot again, another save by Gephardt. And the All-American, Macabra. Loose ball, Macabra fighting for it. Still there, he thought he had it in a stick. Ryan Powell's got it. He'll carry back into the defensive end. Long pass up ahead to Casey. Casey stuck from behind by Bell. Loose ball, picked up. Big hit by Ryan Powell. Five seconds remain. We're gonna try one last quick shot. It goes wide, and Syracuse retains the shutout thus far. Flag on the field, however. Offsides, technical, no face-off for the second quarter. At least that's what the official just indicated. For the Syracuse see. Orangemen, Jason Gephardt getting congratulated, and why not? Syracuse leads the Hoyas 4-0. Back with more Syracuse lacrosse on Super Sports right after this. When you play Syracuse, you always... Uh, live in, uh, in fear that they're going to score in bunches on you. we got to try and eliminate that routine if we can stay away from it because they, they can get on a roll and, and next thing you know you're down five or six goals. Yeah, they're sailing along nicely scoreless game then in about three and a half minutes Syracuse erupts for four goals. Casey Powell scoring there. He had two of them. Matt Kataya had the other two. Just what Dave Urich feared. A Syracuse run and they lead four to nothing as we get set to begin the second period of play. And Georgetown had an opportunity, their man up for 30 seconds was gonna be no face off, there's a delay of game, a guy didn't get out there fast enough, the official has a beeper, when it goes off, you better be ready to play, they were not. Syracuse sends it back to the goalie and they're gonna start over again, take some time off this penalty. Boy, that's just gotta drive you nuts as a coach. And Marshall Abrams will trot into the him offensive up. zone. Yeah, he scored a couple last game. He's a threat with that big stick. Vanderpool's got it. Ten seconds left on the Hoyas penalty. Vanderpool being converged upon now. Nobody really coming to the ball to help him out. 
And Roy Simmons noticed that and called a timeout. Vanderpool saying to his teammates, hey, got to come help me out. Syracuse taking a quick 20 second timeout. I believe the penalty's released. The clock is unofficial. I, I saw somebody run in. I don't see anybody in the penalty area, so I'm assuming that that penalty is now up. We, we do get a look at a clock, but as we said, not always official. But just as you heard from that quote from Dave Yurick, uh, just a lot of bunches and four out of the last five, that's 80%. Uh, you can't do better than that in any sport that I know of. 80% is uh, awfully good. And Syracuse uh, is off to a 4 nothing lead. Talk about the strengths of schedule. Now, there's another thing that's going to be taken into account by the NCAA tournament come selection time. You take a look at those teams. North Carolina out of the picture. They've right. had a, uh, a bad year. Penn State uh, is not in consideration for one of those top spots. Virginia, Maryland, Hopkins, Syracuse. So when you talk about the top uh, seeds, Princeton's going to be one of those top four seeds. Uh, Syracuse, uh, you know, they... It's funny because they're right around sixth in uh, strength of schedule. They're right around sixth in uh, in the rankings right now. So Syracuse, uh, a convincing win today might move them up. Well, you know, they looked North Carolina had the, the toughest schedule, but since then they also played the Stony Brook down in Long Island. Not a traditional West Farm went out to play Ohio State and picked up a win. So everybody's scrambling to try to get their way into the tournament, I think. But uh, Syracuse, as you said, I think it's going to all shake out and people will put all those things into consideration and make a good determination. They are even, by the way. Casey over to Ryan. Ryan, a long pass out to McIntyre. McIntyre winds, fire, saved by Hole, picked up by Casey Powell. That will reset the Syracuse offense. That's tough. Uh, Hole not able to stop the rebound. Made a nice save on the ball. Ball bounced out. Syracuse gets it back again. Boy, look at all those Hoyas packed in front of Hole. I mean, they are just down there tight defensively. It's like a tight zone. I saw Brown use a zone like that, and it uh, worked very effective. That's a shot. Hole, big the ball. save on Burns. Burns still fighting to try to pick it up. Oh, cracked from behind. A big hit. Beautiful play by Steve Iorio. So Iorio, normally a faceoff guy, is out there seeing some time as a midfielder as well. He's got a crack on the stick and uh, did a nice job of getting it out of the Syracuse stick and out of bounds. And now they will attempt to clear. That's Papa, number four, with the ball. Shots 11 apiece. But even in that statistic, but Gephardt's been great. The Syracuse defense, obviously, has been stifling as well. So a lot of those shots from a little further out. Syracuse uh, has turned it up a notch on the offensive end. Quick pass and they score. Finally, first goal of the game for the Hoyas, Peter Velipak. That makes it four to one. Yeah, just as we're talking about what a marvelous job they're doing defensively. Well, they lost Velipak. Velipak kind of camping on the crease. And they did a nice job of getting the ball into him. And Mike Corey starting this with a nice fake. Drew the defense to him because of that. You talked about the double team earlier. And this is what happens here as well, isn't it? As soon as he reads anything like a double team, he sees rules slip off. He knows somebody's open on the crease. And he's looking for his teammate, Peter Velipak who puts it in, only his fifth goal of the season. Probably none more important than that one. Hopefully to stem the tide of the Syracuse offensive onslaught. Let's see what the call is. It's going Syracuse way. And Alexander's going to take it just over the midfield line. With Cryoni in that midfield group. Cordisco, 39. And that's Jeff Cordisco, and here comes brother Chris, who's going to be trotting out, making his way onto our screen quickly. Casey Powell now moving in. Looking, going to work. They have uh, changed over to Papa on him now, trying to give him a different look. And we uh, expect to see both Bell and Papa switching back and forth. Coyone moving in. Coyone shot. Saved as Hole got a piece of it. Oh, oh nice job by Kataya. Right in front of Hole, just stuffed him there. Now Coyone going to work, trying to check. Putting some pressure on. Long looping pass by the Hoyas. Looks like they're going to clear their zone, and they do. Moving on the attack. There's Mike Corey, who did a nice job setting up that last goal. Josh Rule working defensively, trying to close down Belipec, who scored for the Hoyas to make it 4 to 1 moments ago. The Hoyas are going to try to be patient now on the offensive end. Well, got got a lot of time in. left. No time to, no, you know, sense of panicking. They want to just run their offense. This is Mike Hennehan. He's got a couple of goals this year. Hennehan being dogged by Chris Cordisco. Hennehan moves in. Turkey's doing a nice job recognizing and sliding over defensively to help out. Hennehan going to work again. Moves in. His shot. 
gets past Gephardt for the, slow, uh, for the score. Hennehan makes it four to two. And just like that, the Hoyas are back in the game. Hennehan just and took a, a little bit of a change up. Just a sweep, shot down, high bouncer, and uh, he brings them back to within two. He moves on for Disco. And he's not able to track it down, and Hennehan brings them up to within two, and now the face-offs become so much more important because you get another offensive opportunity every time you get a face-off, and it's hotly contested. Nobody with it yet. Still on the ground. He's battling for it. Nobody can pick it up. Finally, Casey Powell comes over and does so. Casey going to work. Doesn't have much offensive help out there. A lot of blue jerseys facing defensive end. Notices that and throws it over to Matt Kataya. Kataya pass to Ryan Powell. Boy, that was pretty well contested. Now Casey Powell looking, faking in the slot. Quick shot. Score, Syracuse, John Matthews. The senior in his final game at the Carrier Dome. Comes up with a goal. His fifth of the season. Boy, that's James nice for high John. School, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say from Fayetteville. Yep. Went to James Woodlewood High School. Local kid. Low shot. Nice job by Matthews. Casey look Powell, at it right there. Boy, that was a well-placed shot. Syracuse leads 5-2. to two. Another face-off. Scooped up by the Hoyas, but uh, back on the ground again. Well, now there's one they've got, but they lost it. Nope, Ryan Powell's got it. Ryan looking, tripped up, retained possession. <laughs> on his back and tried to flip out a quick pass to Seglia. Oh, that is just so athletic. Good Ooh, call by uh, Jim O'Hara. Watch the, watch the trip as they get the ball in and the stick is going to come down and throw his leg, caught it right there and tripped it. So yeah, he's trying to, trying to maintain possession and he, he knew that maybe somebody might be there. Good job of, uh, as you said, being on the ground and playing. <laughs> Trying to keep the ball in, so Syracuse will get the ball. We don't know where it is. Hoy is looking around and uh, wondering as we settle our shot there on Anderson Bell whether they can hang with the Orangemen right now. Bell off for a minute for tripping. So Syracuse in a man up situation. Ryan Powell has it to Vanderpool. D'Arcangelo. Coyone in there as well. Going down to Ryan Powell. Doesn't have a cutter. Vanderpool winds, fires, and scores. Ira Vanderpool. 6 to 2 Syracuse. So Syracuse answers the Georgetown flurry with a couple goals of their own to extend it back to a four goal lead. Took 15 seconds off the penalty, and then uh, they got the ball out on a skip pass. And now Ira Vanderpool puts it in for Syracuse. They got an assist from Ryan Powell, number one. We saw a good look again from behind that play as Vanderpool notches his 12th of the season about how Ryan went back behind the play. He was on the right-hand side of the cage. Vanderpool was on the left-hand side of the cage, and the Jehoias couldn't react quickly enough defensively. Syracuse wins another face-off. Casey Powell looking in, trying to muscle his way past. Uh, oh, and his uh, pass goes high and wide. Trying to muscle his way past Bell, who is a Big fella, as we mentioned. Yeah, he's a big guy. Watch the back side. Yeah, banging down there and uh, trying to draw the double team perhaps for the pass, but uh, sailed too high. And now the Hoyas will have it. Everybody even now. Penalty released on the goal. And this is Hennehan carrying in. Hennehan, one of the two Hoya goals. The second one, but it made it four to two. You can see uh, shaking his head. Velipek, uh, rule stick might have knocked him in the noggin. Here's McCaver now going to work on Sheedy. Oh, they close McCaver off. He has to give it up. Which oh, Syracuse, yeah, just to exactly what I was going to say. Safarelli closing down his man, Mike Corey. Here's McCaver again. Sheedy has just been on him like blue. We're talking about a guy who scored 37 goals. McCaver is third in the nation. It's Scoring as far as goals and assists per game. Great switch right there. McCaver just moved and so Sheedy switched and uh, he and uh, Rule changed people. 
Boy, Velipek kind of hanging out behind the goal. You can see the lone away. A rule kind of cheating and helping out defensively. Now with Velipek moving. Oh, quick shot goes wide. Velipek uh, hustled back for the backup. Boy, Macabra. That was a, a tough shot from out there and paid the price after it, too. Sheedy, interesting, you just said, I, I got him. As soon as the ball went out of bounds, he went back to McCabra, said, let's make the switch back. He, obviously, they want this matchup with Sheedy on McCabra. It's going to stay uh, uh, Hoya away. Yeah, that was an unusual attempt uh, there from Velipek in the pass. The shot's even at 14 apiece. As Greg McCabra takes it, the All-American. One of the best players in the country, but Syracuse has just been closing players down. Quick pass in front, and they shoot and score there. The Hoyas come up with a goal from Scott Urich, the coach's son, with his 27th of the year. John Glatzel, number six, is on Urich. Make the nice pass, left-hand shot, couldn't get on quickly enough. The thing that Urich did was he got the ball and he got rid of it quickly before they could react, get a stick on him. And certainly from that distance, uh, Gebhardt didn't have much of a chance. So Scott Urich, Dave's son, Comes up with a goal that brings him within 6-3. Well, the caver has been so quiet. Ball on the ground here, and they're fighting for it. And, and as uh, the Hoyas come up over, this is Iorio. Reminds me really of the job Hobart did on Nathan Roost, another one of the fine players in the country. And they, they just closed it down. He had a, a very difficult time against the Syracuse defense. And it looks like they're aiming to do the same thing to McCabra today. Back Cabra, I don't believe, is chucked in the game right now. Cabra has been given a little bit of a break. Both teams getting some uh, second D and second O in. Greg Peters now going to work on Matt Alexander. That has not been an easy task of late. Oh, open shot. Nice save by Gephardt. And he came over, closed down the angle on Hubschman. Well, yeah. Made the save. Hubschman beat Segley at 24 cleanly took the shot and uh, that was a good save. Watch, see how open he is with that stick and look at Gebhardt, nice reaction, came on with that stick, got it right in the midsection, knocked it away. Boy's looking for Cutter and now moving in on Alexander and scoring an acrobatic goal, Greg Peters, eighth of the year for the Hoyas. They're gonna wave off the penalty flag you might have seen on the ground. Alexander has not been beaten much lately, but this is a nice move by Peters. Kind of faked him out of the pass attempt and darted in. Yeah, he went kind of high and uh, he put the ball high. Yeah, so he faked, he faked him out. And as you said, we have not seen uh, Matt Alexander have that happen to him probably so far this season. But uh, he's human. He's going to go out and get somebody else in. The penalty was, uh, as you said, waved off because it was a just a 30-second penalty, and those are absolved by a goal. Oreo working for it, and Casey Powell out there. Powell's out there when Syracuse wants to win a faceoff, and uh, even Casey's presence didn't help. He's now stuck on the defensive end for a little while. Yeah, they give him, uh, that, that's his chance to play the wing, and, and he's the ground ball guy, too. He's the leader in ground balls, so that's the kind of guy that you want on the wing. They want to make sure the, that this uh, faceoff doesn't get away from him, either. They're 6-4 now. People, the momentum has kind of subtly shifted, perhaps, towards Georgetown. Seven and a half minutes remain in the second quarter. With that score, six to four, Syracuse, and the Hoyas looking to make it a one-goal game. Mike Hanahan going to work on Casey Powell. Hanahan fakes. Casey calmly stays with him. Now McCabra trying to get something going. Quick pass over. Lucky. Your pardon, that's Dan Shea in there, not McCabra. Right. McCabra, is, uh, he is in the game being guarded by Sheedy. Velipek was open on that last play. It's wide open. They lost him. Here's Shea now. Shea trying to go to work on low. Oh, riding him off the play. Physical with him. Looking for the cutter. Still has it. Hangs on to it. A lot of Velipek cuts. has it. A lot of cuts up there. They got a stack, four-man stack. And they are cutting left and right and being patient because they know the more times you run it, somebody gets a half a step, the next time he comes back and resets, he's going to get a whole step. Syracuse did a good job defensively. They break out of that stack and take it out and open it up again. Here's McCabra now. And no, it's just still Shea. I beg your pardon. Shea has it being guarded by Lowe. Now making contact. Shea with the pass, running a weave. And Stripped out of there. Beautiful job by Marshall. Abrams up to Casey Powell. Here come the Hoy or here come the Orangemen, rather. Casey to Ryan. Ryan, a quick pass down. Low, what a pass! 
by Ryan Powell to McIntyre for his third goal of the game. That was just great. That was just a, a, a defensive effort that started the fast break transition. Look at the pass right between three Hoyas and Kutai takes hold down and then brings the stick back up. And the assist goes to Powell. But Kutaya just did a super job. Look at that grab. And once again, Ryan going behind the play on the pass. And what great anticipation, because when he brought that stick back, that passing lane wasn't there. Right. By the time he made the pass, the Hoyas had cleared past him. The pass going behind them again. And Kutaya all along, and he knows what to do with it down there. He does. That was the fourth assist by Paul, by the way. So he is uh, looking to feed. He goes back to a three-goal lead, 7-4, with about 5.45 left in this first half. To tie a three goals, Vanderpool has also scored, Matthews for the Orangemen, and Casey Powell has two goals. And we have a stop, and it uh, looks like an equipment problem. Oh, uh, he's bleeding. Yep. Greg Peters will come out, and uh, he is uh, bandaged up. Yep. Going out to take his place, Keith Baker, seeing his first action of the game. Syracuse, boy, they can just become so efficient. And uh, they have done that with their last three shots scoring. And that's also a sign of good patience, not taking a bad shot, working it around for the good shot. Here's McCabra. Look how quick, look how quick that he checks him. She does a great job. And then the defensive mini picks him up. Now he's going to come back and give another check, fall down. Ooh. Oh, my. That was looking like a whack to the <laughs> head, wasn't it? He missed him. Ball still loose. Finally, the Hoyas pick it up. Try to reset offensively. Unsettled situation. The shot goes wide, and Tyler Gamble jumping up and down in dismay as he had a very good opportunity there. Good point. He did have a, an opportunity. Syracuse a little bit unsettled at the, the midfield. They were still going for the ball, and uh, when the Hoyas came up with it, they were a little slow getting back, and they managed to track it down. But uh, once again, it will be number 12. McCaver with the ball and Chidi. Same uh, little lineup we've had. Both guys played have come in with good reputations. She's doing a good job. McCaver 5'8", 180. Sheedy is 6'1", 200. And has just stayed with him step for step. Quick shot, knocked down before it got anywhere. Flipped over to Gephardt. And Gephardt goes to rule, and Syracuse will try to clear. Long pass up. And corralled there by Seglia. He goes to Casey Powell. Seglia will trot off. Jeff Cordisco comes back on. Coyone's going to come on as well, but Casey looks to go to work. Dumps down low to Ryan. Ryan spins back the other way. He'll hold up. Penalty flag down. Ryan sets behind the net. Over to Casey Powell. Casey looking for a cutter. Has Jeff Cordisco. His shot goes wide and uh, saved there, actually, by yeah. Hole. Beautiful save. Looked like he got it with a foot. Hockey save. Yeah, came up with a foot. Uh, they're going to be man down, the Hoyas are, as they got a slash. They up-checked on, uh, on the helmet of Powell and uh, brought his head back, and that will cost him a minute. A hole, I think. Watch and see what he does with this. As they take the, take the shot. There's Ryan. There's the hit. There it is, right there. Good call. We won't see the save, but take my word for it. I think Hole, you're right. You made a hockey save, Rob. Good thing for a uh, for face masks, huh? Yeah, yeah, right, absolutely. Here's Coyone looking, dumps down to Ryan Powell. Ryan Powell out to Vanderpool. Very similar to the play they ran before getting a goal in the man-up situation. Back to Ryan again now on the ground. Ryan scoops it up. Looking around for cutters. And he'll flip over to Casey. Always a good option. Out to Coyone. Coming into Kataya. Kataya has three goals already. Over to Casey Powell. Powell winds, fires. Boy, that might have been a face save by Hole. Great job. They're putting the pressure on him. Hoy is looking to clear. Oh, Casey, yeah, he's going to get a penalty there. The Hoya's bench was up in arms, and uh, as the ball rolls to the ground, a penalty will come up on Casey Powell. With 3-12 remaining in the second, and Syracuse leading 7-4. White, second 22. time Casey's tried that over the head check, and uh, second time it's resulted in a penalty. Anytime, anytime you do a check like that, you know, they're going to they're gonna give you something. And that particular one, it's going to be only a 30. You can see Dave Yurick waving his arms up. So a 3-12, and Georgetown going to the man-up situation. They trail 7-4. to four. 
So they've rebounded pretty nicely. They were down 4-0 after the first. They have picked one goal back up here in the second and gotten themselves on the scoreboard. So they have to have a little more confidence than they did after the first period. Here's McCavra with the ball in the lower right-hand portion of your screen. That's Greg McCavra just kind of They're actually even right now. The ball. Hoyas still, now they're, now they're man up. They had about five seconds to go on the, the last penalty to Hoyas. So now they're man up. Okay, so now they will look to launch into their attack. A fake attempt there by Velopec. And trying to catch the, whole, the orange man off balance. Didn't work. Here's McCavra now. Quick shot high and wide. Tyler Gamble with a big blast. And uh, they're even. They're now at even strength. The Hoyas let another one slip away. Shot goes wide. Corralled there. Looking for a cutter. Syracuse closes it off. Boy, they are just playing as a unit so well defensively. Yeah, they're just directing people, telling Abrams, you go on out and pick him up. And that him is McCavra, so McCavra has a different guy. He notices that. I don't think it's any easier than Sheedy. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to find that as, uh, as simple as he thinks. Another 6-2 guy is uh, Georgetown leading in shots, but Syracuse leading on the scoreboard. Quick pass over. Shot goes high and wide again. 2-0-1 remains in the second, and uh, it is 7-4. See him trade back again? They made the shift. Now that Sheedy goes back and picks up McCaver again, that they had had to shift on uh, as they got some picks and picked up different men, but they go back and that's Sheedy on McCaver again. Rule at 6'6", 230 also out there. I mentioned Abrams is 6'2", Sheedy 6'1", 200. These guys must look like monsters to the Hoyas. And the pass sliding through. Gephardt's got it out to Marshall Abrams. Whoa. Ooh, Ooh, forgot fine. something. Good dump pass, and uh, I think we are going to have offsides. Is that right? Oh, no, uh, Georgetown calls timeout. So the Hoya is using another timeout with a minute 30 remaining in the second period. Syracuse leading by a score of 7-4. to four. We saw that pass elude Marshall Abrams, but we saw very little elude him in Wednesday's game when Syracuse played Hobart. In fact, Coach Roy Simmons talked about Marshall Abrams and his improved play this season. Two beautiful goals by Marshall Abrams. Uh, of course, he's, a, he's got one of the better sticks on the team, even though it's 72 inches long, and he handles the traffic very well. Born with a stick in his hand, that helps. And Roy Simmons talking about Marshall Abrams. You don't see guys with those long sticks trot in and score a couple goals uh, too often. The Native American kid, and he just is a super lacrosse player, very aggressive, and uh, he's got that pole, that's a strip. You know, that's one thing the defense wasn't doing mostly last year and, and I would say into this year. They did not create turnovers. They played good defense, but they didn't create a lot of turnovers, and that was a, a result of Abrams right there doing that by knocking the ball down. And uh, I think his assist last Wednesday was as pretty as his goals. We made a little AstroTurf bounce oh, to, uh, to Powell, to gorgeous. Ryan Powell, who put it in behind his back. And Abrams has really improved a lot. But let's just check ground balls. Syracuse at 24, Georgetown at 20. So pretty even at that point. And the game pretty even, a three goal lead for Syracuse. But that can go, as you know, they go in spurts. You mentioned those turnovers we saw in there. Georgetown 14 to nine in that turnover department. Syracuse leading seven to four as we approach the one minute mark. Scooped up there by Rule. Oh, what a beautiful play and Syracuse goes on the attack. And this is Marshall Abrams with it. Abrams looking, quick pass to Powell. Powell behind the back, pass to Ryan. Oh, what a save by Hole. Syracuse giving chase, they let it roll, and it will go back to Syracuse. <laughs> what a save by Hole. What a sequence. Abrams all the way down, makes the pass back. Let's see if we can pick it up. I thought it might have hit the pipe. Maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, I, I think oh, it hit the pipe. I think you're absolutely correct. Yeah, it hit the pipe. Hole had the uh, hole covered. It went to his right, and it went off the pipe, and we're back to live action. Brian Hole's got eight saves, and they have been some good ones. Syracuse been taking some tough shots at him. 40 seconds remain in the first half. Ryan Powell looking out to Cordisco and uh, hit just as he made the pass. Goes all the way back as uh, we had a hold. Now, 
They're going to get a push. A push, I think. Yeah, that's right. I didn't mean yeah. to correct you, but Sheedy was standing there with you. The idea is try to knock your guy legally off sides. What happened was they detected him pushing at the midfield line. Watch right there. See, that's the push from behind. You can't do it. Sheedy was technically off sides, but it was not a legal push, so Syracuse gets the ball back. And this is Cordisco over to Powell, back to Matt Kataya. Kataya fakes a pass, still has it over to Ryan now. 15 seconds remain in the first half. Quick zip out, and uh, that was a save. A save there as uh, Matt Kataya was whacked down from behind. And let's see what the play, the penalty is going to be. It is going to go against uh, Jeff Burke. Or rather, Roger Colbert, the defenseman for the Hoyas. It'll be a 30-second job. Now, they got 12 seconds left. If they want to hold on to the ball, it has to be in your stick, or you, if, if it's... <laughs> then you get the ball back without a, a face-off, but you got 12 seconds. We'll see what they do with it. But now, if they make a pass and the time elapses, the, where the pass is intended has to be caught. I think they're just going to hold on to the ball. Nope, oh, they tie over to Casey Powell. No, I don't Looks think like, gonna... yeah, Casey's just going to hang on to it. Five seconds and counting. And they will trot to the locker room. Syracuse leads Georgetown by a score of 7-4. to four. Casey Powell has a couple of goals. Ryan Powell has four assists to the Powell brothers. <laughs> well, we've come to expect it, haven't we? Absolutely. And, you know, uh, you hate to say it, it's not out of the woods yet. It's only a three-goal lead, but Syracuse looking awful good at this point. They lead 7-4. to four. Back with more Syracuse lacrosse on Super Sports after this. Welcome back to the Carry Dome. The Syracuse Orangemen leading the Georgetown Hoyas by a score of 7-4. to four. And it has been a terrific first half. It is. And as I said uh, before the half ended, anybody's game yet. Still a lot of excitement. Fans are still waiting for this to happen, too. A lot of, a lot of good uh, lacrosse left. One thing that's been terrific is the quality of the goals. I mean, there has been some terrific lacrosse out there. There sure has. If you like excitement, this is a good place to watch because... Uh, Kutaya has just been doing a great job for Syracuse and Powell looking for him and watch him thread the needle there. Just a great job. Kutaya very hot at the end of the season. Kid from Homer. And now Powell, of course, just taking it on the right side. Goalie, high bounce shot, hole not able to stop it. But, uh, you know, Georgetown wasn't out of it yet. Watch Greg Peters, number nine. He flies through the air, takes the left-hand shot. Oh. See what happened? He got Gebhardt going down and then took the high road put it over his head, but you know, the goalies have been playing great also. Both guys come up with some great saves. Hubschman's gonna take a shot. Watch this, watch the save, bang, body save, knocks it back out. And of course, Brian Hall, the kid from Fayetteville Manley's High School, he's gonna make a great save there, right with the stick, as Casey Powell took a crank on him. So, you got the attack and the midfield playing well, you got the goalies playing well, you got yourself a great lacrosse game. Take a look at the statistics. Anything particularly telling there? It looks very even. Pretty much even. You know, I think uh, both teams will look to see if they can establish some dominance. Let's look for the face-offs to be even more important in this second half because that's one of the things to the Hoyas to get back in this game. they got to pick up some face-offs right in a row and get some good shots and some goals. They can't afford to let Syracuse get the face-offs and keep them out of their offensive end. Syracuse jumped out to a 4 to nothing lead after the first period of play, and... Since then, the Hoyas have really uh, made it a game. It looked like maybe Syracuse would possibly blow them out, especially the way they've been playing. Brian Hole, nine saves. He came with a 60% save percentage, maybe just a hair under that right now, but boy, he hasn't faced the likes of Syracuse either. Gabby has made six saves. He has at exactly 60% as the Hoyas have scored four goals. Here comes Syracuse. Uh, Man up. Yeah, no face-off situation in their pass. Quickly errant to Kataya. And so they squander, in essence, the man-up situation there, and that's why there was no face-off. Right, absolutely, and uh, that was a big mistake. Uh, they didn't get much time, uh, the eight seconds, and instead of getting a shot, they threw the ball away. But now they're going to put a lot of pressure on this clear of Georgetown because they are a man up for about, well, they got him, uh, I don't know how many more seconds. Good oh, check. Ooh, a huge hit. <laughs> ball comes loose. Syracuse moves back on the attack, and Taya has it. Offsides, I think. Yeah, rule, a nice check, but he ended up over the other side of the field. And uh, watch the watch the check there. As he he puts it on uh, Hubschman, and uh, the stick was right out of his hand. But he was offsides. Uh, I think the penalty is over, and they are even. Yes, it is. Syracuse still looking to put some pressure on the clear, and they can't do so. And yeah, we're going to have a. Uh, a penalty as Matt Kataya carelessly stepped over the 
midline stripe. Uh, really no reason for it. He just uh, was kind of trotting to a halt and just took one step too far. And uh, Dave Yurick's team goes and went up. And then stopped hoping that he wouldn't notice it. And Dave Yurick noticed it. Yeah, he also <laughs> looked right at the official. Did, yeah. did, did you catch me? Yeah, then he put his stick down. It looked like maybe it was just my stick that was over. Because that would be legal. <laughs> but no, no, it was your foot. And... Uh, the referee, Jim O'Hara, made the call and uh, man down for Syracuse. Just that quickly, they go from man up to man down. 14-20. 40 seconds all this has elapsed, and La Jolla is now with a chance to get a big goal. This might be an important goal, first goal here of the third quarter. Syracuse gets a goal, and they get back their four-goal cushion. Georgetown could strike to within two, something they did earlier in the game on a Hennon goal to make it four to two. Syracuse has been able to keep an arm's length after sprinting out to that 4 nothing lead. Oh, scooped up beautifully, shoots and scores, and Matt Alexander thought he was going to be able to pick that one up, but it slipped past him to Hubschman. Hubschman then, with Matthews going the other way, was able to slip past him and score. We tell him, not your fault. The ball's on the ground, and Hubschman came up with it, takes the left-handed low bouncer, and there was nothing that Gebby could do about that one. And Hubschman brings him within two, and now we go to the face-off circle for the first time this half, and we said that might be important. What's even more important now, Syracuse wants to see if they can't come up with one. It's eight to four in favor of Georgetown. Syracuse has Burns out yeah. there. Tim Burns taking the face-off, and a switch up from uh, the normal guys they run out there. Burns will take a couple, three, four a game sometimes. Trying to get something uh, different moving in there and it uh, was not effective as Matt Casson comes up with it and Georgetown back on the attack and ooh, if we start to see more of this it's becoming eerily reminiscent of Loyola so Syracuse jumped out to a 5-0 lead in that game the Greyhounds got a little momen momentum going and then just won face-off after face-off after face-off in the second half Syracuse rarely had the ball to try to go on the attack and that was Hanford for Loyola. And, uh, you don't want to get into that groove again. And uh, Syracuse, of course, is still up by two, but they've uh, made a couple of mistakes that uncharacteristic for Hubs them. Been, uh, winding his way through traffic, comes sliding in. The shot is knocked aside and goes back to Syracuse. He's in the crease. He tries a little sneak. See what Rule does? Can I get inside of him? He gets inside, but Rule gets a stick on him. You see his leg hit the line, and uh, they're going to go after Syracuse on this clear. Is the play Gary Gate made famous? Or the attempt at the, the play Gary Gate made famous? Cheating now carrying in, flips back to Burns. Tim Burns moves in. Fake, stops, winds, fires, saved by Hole. Hole now a clearing pass. And coming back the other way, trying to move on the attack quickly. Ahoy, is that's Michael Corey. That's somebody uh, whose number is not listed on the roster. As Abrams comes back in and each team is substituted. Oh boy, oh boy, big hit. The ball is uh, on the ground. So are both players. Yeah. You can see uh, Sheedy and McCabra has had a rough go of it today. Oh my goodness. Boy, he ran in and hit him in. <laughs> They both collided. A lot, of, a lot of bodies there going after him. That stick, you hung the stick out there, and then they just made sure that he didn't have the ball. So McCabra down, and now we're back to live action. Syracuse takes the ball behind. McCabra uh, has gotten past Sheedy a couple of times, but Sheedy has been able to whack him with that big stick and, <laughs> and uh, draw, him da draw him back. So. Uh, Sheedy doing a good job of uh, keeping McCaffrey in front of him, but when he's gotten past him, he's also done a nice job there as well. That's why they give you 72 inches of uh, aluminum. Here is uh, Casey Powell looking, faking. Going now to Ryan Powell. Georgetown bunched in very tightly defensively. Burns has it. Boy, they, they pack it in tighter, I think, than anybody we've seen this year. Brown did a similar thing last year, and uh, it creates some problems because you don't see the goal. And conversely, you can also screen the goalie. So, say, yeah, you know, I was about to say that. That's right. Here comes Casey Powell not trying to come in. Oh, he's checked hard. Gives it back up and uh, still out in front, scrambling around, and the Hoyas have it. 
Long, lofting, clearing pass. Oh. Caught beautifully by Matt Cassin. Cassin now has a man in front. But he had to go behind him. And Flick has it as uh, Rule was cutting off the angle. There's Andy Flick now looking for something. Flick scored 30 goals this year. Has been shut down so far today. Rob Peters with the ball. And so we are getting deeper into the bench now. He's got the short stick to tie eye on him, and they're trying to trying to do some so they get a short stick. That's the matchup they want with this guy. Oh, nice check, Vanderpool. Loose ball. Here comes Mike Corey coming in. Vanderpool still working on him. Vanderpool comes away with it, puts a fake on. Oh, runs into a post of Hoyas is slammed to the ground. Getting a little physical out there. Vanderpool now pushing off his man. And I think they are going to call something here. Well, obviously going to call something here as Scott Urich goes flying. They're getting a little testy out there. You think? A little testy? Yeah, yes, I, uh, <laughs> I do indeed. Watch. There's the there's a hit right there. So now there's a hit from behind. That's one call. Let's see what it is. Dave Urich, of course, he's not going to take this sitting down as they go to make a little explanation here. That's what I like about this sport. One minute, you're not important. Number 21, Michael, 30 seconds for a push. So what happens is Syracuse will get the ball because they have less penalty time. They will be even for 30 seconds, but then Syracuse will be up for 30 seconds. Okay. Coach Urich's son is going to be sitting for a minute. Syracuse number 21 will be sitting Burns for 30. So that's the way it goes. So they will be even for 30 seconds. Syracuse leads 7-5 to five at the 10-22 mark of this game. The uh, Hoyas have scored the only goal in the second half. That coming from Hubschman. And Syracuse has the ball, looking to clear. They do it, and now they're going to the attack. Even man situation. The next so 20 seconds or so, they will have another man out there. McIntyre spinning. On to Ryan Powell to Casey. Casey to Vanderpool. Vanderpool fakes, comes in, shoots and scores. Ira Vanderpool. Oh, boy, he just got it off so quickly. Made the nice initial fake. Jut it in and then let a quick one go. And Vanderpool has moved it back to a three-goal lead for Syracuse. He's come up uh, offensively this last two or three games. This one, a nice leap shot. He puts it right between the legs of Brian Hall. You're going to get another look at it here as Powell makes the pass. Nice jump. And Brian Hall not able to stop it. But Vanderpool coming on offensively, as we said, the last three or four games of the season and putting some goals in. That one a big one gives Syracuse back the three goal lead as we get set for the face. They call that the five hole in hockey through the legs. So if you need the five hole of hole, and it's nine to four as Georgetown led in the face offs until that face off. And here comes Casey Powell looking. Didn't see anybody, got it back. His shot is deflected as Casey is sent flying. And the Hoyas have it. And they look to clear now. Roger Colbert, the defenseman. Trying to maybe get in a little too deep with that big stick winding through traffic. Now a loose ball on the ground. That'll go Syracuse way. There was a push. Yes, sir. 100% correct. Goes back to Syracuse. 13 seconds still remain in the Georgetown penalty. And Syracuse a man up now. You don't want to take that 72 inches down too far because they'll get a hacking and a hewing on you and that's exactly what happened lost the ball back to live action Powell takes it behind Brian Powell that is Brian going to work back to the net Jeff Cordes goes out there as well as Chris Cordes going back to the pass over to Jeff Jeff taking a peek goes behind the net to Ryan Powell Ryan over to Casey Casey moves on the screen coming in cut off looking to get rid of it now to Ryan Powell Ryan spinning back the other way Syracuse patient offensively. Oh, quick to Kataya in front, he scores! Well, Kataya just drifted off his man as Ryan was working behind the net. Ryan saw it in an instant, hit him right on the money. That was somebody lost track of Kataya. And while they were doing all that cutting and stuff, you say, well, what happens there? Well, you look at number seven, Colbert wasn't sure who had Kutaya. Watch where Kutaya comes from. Who's got him? The answer is nobody. And Colbert turned around and said, somebody should have had this. You can see his hand there. He said, somebody should have had this guy. But that movement behind sets up the cut. And that's a great job by Matt Kutaya getting open. 
fourth goal of the game for McIntyre. Syracuse back to a four-goal lead. They lead 9-5. to five. The 8.50 mark. Casey Powell's got it behind the back pass to Kataya. Kataya moving in. Whirls has it knocked out of his stick. Still on the ground. Casey Powell dives for it. Couldn't control. Finally, the Hoyas come away with it. Long pass across the field. And they're going to get into the Syracuse attack zone. This is Mike Hennahan. And a hand to Vela Peck behind the goal of McCabra, rather. McCabra with it as they set their offense, waiting for Dan Shea to get out there and some additional help. Mike Corey comes on. And this is McCabra with it, guarded by Shooty. Shooty has closed McCabra down. Third in the nation in scoring. And he has been squelched today. And he is not on his fanny and Syracuse comes back the other way. Here's Lowe. Lowe looking. Moves in. Puts on a move. His knocked down from behind or the ball knocked out of his uh, stick from behind I should say. And Hole has it. The Hole has a look to come back on the attack again. And Lowe wandering into the offensive zone and trying to make something happen. Michael Corey long pass. Boy bodies are flying all over the field. Yeah they are. Yeah and, and sometimes you look up and there's nobody there to knock them down so Maybe a little footing problem. At any rate, uh, Georgetown's going to set up again, and they tried to feed the crease. They forced it the last time, and Rule knocked it away. Let's see what they do this time. Here's Corey now, working it around the perimeter. Mike Hennahan has the ball. Quick pass to McCabra. McCabra spins, looking for something, has nothing. Is closed off again. Good defensive help there as well. It was a long jump to go eight, nine yards. That's exactly what uh, Georgetown wanted to take advantage of. They couldn't there. They take it back behind on the left side. It was uh, Safarelli and Seglia working on Shea. Oh, my goodness. Jumping into the crease and getting a little bit of help. <laughs> you can't turn Corey the ball in, in yourself. <laughs> Get Corey here. The, the ball doesn't go in, but Corey does. Oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I think that was, that was the ride, wasn't it? He was trying to get up on the turnbuckle there and bring it down on a bone crusher. <laughs> a foreign object <laughs> winding up in the goal. Not the ball, but a Hoya. And here's Mike Hennahan trying to go to work on Matt Alexander. Had a beautiful goal earlier. Hennahan looking, seeing nothing, going back to Macabre. Or rather, Shea, I beg your pardon. This is Shea. It's Shea on the move. Jump. Oh, another switch there as Seglia came over to help out Safarelli. Let's see if they switch back, and they do. Look at Rule. Oh, he is everywhere, isn't he out there? He has played a great game. Andy Flick is the one he's guarding right now. Boy, knocked away again. Syracuse's defense has risen to the challenge. Here's Segley now, looking to clear. Head pass. Doesn't, can't do it, and uh, the Hoyas control. Back on the attack. This is Scott Europe. With Mike Lee saw. Coach's son. Yep. A smart play there by the coach's son. Oh, Corey coming in. Beautiful move. Oh, my goodness. Michael Corey, a terrific job. Then he caught Scott Urich cutting in. And Yurik shot and scored. Really no chance at all for Jason Gephardt. Kind of an unsettled situation. They made the jump. Now there's nobody else to slide. And the left-hander puts it by as Yurik just makes a great move after he gets the ball. See right there, they jump. There's no slide. And he just takes a beautiful left-handed shot. But as you said, Corey, nice assist. And uh, just read it very, very well. That's important. And they come back to within three. And he beat his man, Drew. Yurik's man to him on the help spotted that, and so did Yurik. You have to give Yurik some credit, too. And Yurik uh, found the open spot, and Roy Simmons might start to have some concerns right now. 9 to 6, 540 remains in the second. The Hoyas have cut it to a three goal lead and now have the ball again. And Syracuse lost the faceoff on a procedure call, so they didn't even get a chance to contest that one. Tyler Gamble has the ball for the Hoyas. They run a patient attack here. Oh, that's a big mistake. Errant pass is scooped up by Greg Peters just before they got off the field of play. Peters with a quick pass. So another Hoya on the ground. And another Hoya on the ground. 
That was a big tangle there. And uh, Tim Dwisker with a big hit. Georgetown running on 2 2 2. They had two people all the way across, two people in back, two people in the middle, and two people up on the midfield line. They switch out again and just try to make those cutters get open. But Syracuse has been playing aggressive defense right now at Sheedy on McCabra. Boy, what a job Kevin Sheedy has done on McCabra. Just closing him down. Man, that is no easy task. Quick pass down low. Spinning over again and uh, moving in, shooting and scoring. Oh, a beautiful goal. He paid the price, did Greg Peters, but Peters comes up with a goal to make it 9-7. to seven. Caught him on a slide. They didn't get to Peters, the guy who we showed you at halftime going through the air. Watch him. It's kind of an unsettled situation. Abrams goes way out on him. He makes a dive right there, and Abrams went for the stick, and by the time they slid over to pick him up, he had time to make the shot, and that's from a point-blank range. Rule finally knocked him down, but he beat Abrams, and Peters comes up with a second goal, and they pulled it within two, and the faceoffs once again become ever more important. Syracuse has this one. Here's Burns. Burns to Ryan Powell. Down low quickly. Say stuffed as Darcangelo couldn't get it through. The Hoyas have it again. Oh, sloppy pass, but it bounced off a stick and right to the Hoyas. So things beginning to bounce the Hoyas way a little bit. As we said, you're going to get this momentum shift that happens all the time in lacrosse. It goes in spurts. Right now, it's the Hoyas spurt there taking the momentum, and they've got a two-goal deficit to make up, but they are getting people in and taking their time offensively. Well, the face-offs are the great equalizer. I mean, in what other sport, you know, in football or basketball or what have you, if you score a basket, the other team gets the ball. If you score right. a touchdown, you have to kick it off to them. But in lacrosse, you can continue to have uh, possession of the ball. Quick shot and another goal. That's Dan Shea. The Hoyas have drawn to within one. Now this is a run for the Hoyas. And just what you said, uh, it's very true. They reward offensive dominance by letting you get the ball back. They've scored in their last four shots. That's 100%. And you're going to see they've all been good shots, and they've been very difficult for Gebhardt to try to stop because they just didn't Shea just very close because he got the jump on number 21, Burns. Well, Burns was on it. Right. But just didn't get on his stick. Did, yeah, right. didn't get on his stick side at all. Another faceoff for the Hoyas. Well, that was a tricky shot by Shea, and I, I think it, it may have fooled Gephardt. And Burns had him, but he didn't really tie him up. And uh, usually you see a guy with a little room on a, on a goal that far away, but he didn't really have much room. He just uh, had enough to draw his stick back and fire one off. Mike Hanahan now has the ball way out on the attack. 3.15 and counting in the third quarter. Syracuse leading Georgetown 9-8. And Georgetown looking to move on the attack. Brian Price with the ball. Well, they've closed down McCabra, but just as Syracuse has some depth, the Hoyas have some depth as well. Here's Flick looking. Flick moving in. Flick shoots and scores. The game is tied up at 9-9. Flick with a goal for the Hoyas. Rule had him, but he could not get on his stick as he came around. He, geez, he did everything but get on the stick. And unfortunately for Gebhardt and Syracuse, that's what they had to do. Watch Rule. He goes right there, gets on the stick, loses it, comes back. After it came off the stick, he couldn't get back on the stick. And Flick, 31st goal of the season. And as important a goal as you will see. Let's see who's out there in the faceoff circle now for Georgetown. Is that Iorio? Yeah. Five for five on their last five shots. Loose ball. Team still battling for it. Finally picked up by Syracuse and Josh Rule. Looking for somebody. Oh. Lifts it up in the air. Beautiful grab. Rolled back the other way. The Hoyas are going to come up with it. Three times Syracuse has led by four goals. They led it 4-0, 6-2, and 9-5. Now it is 9-9. The Hoyas have scaled the summit. That's Hubschman. Hubschman has a goal today. Trying to go to work on Matt Alexander. Hubschman looking. Syrac uh, Syracuse, yes, has uh, found the Hoyas back right in their pocket. 9-9, 2-0-8 remains in the third. Dave York's team has scrambled back, shown a lot of character. 
They weren't ruffled when they were down four, down four three times. McCaver coming in and looking at uh, the score by quarters. Georgetown obviously dominated here in the third. McCaver shot off the top of the crossbar. Boy, McCaver has not stopped working hard. Sheedy rode him and rode him and rode him, and he had enough uh, ability to get something on that shot, hit off the top of the crossbar. Georgetown had the backup, and so they had the ball. You can see 9-9, nine to nine, the 150 mark in the third quarter. Talked about uh, this in previous games, especially the Loyola game. Quick shot saved by Gephardt. Time of possession. And... Uh, it's a stat you see in football. I'd love to see one in lacrosse because the Hoyas have had the ball. Well, when you get the faceoffs, you get the possession. And there's the, there's a shot. Save. Bounced out. It's still a shot. Whoever gets there first gets it. Gebhardt only one save this half. Shots 31-27. Georgetown out shooting Syracuse at this point by four. And Burns looking for some help. Spins and takes it in himself. Turns over to Ryan Powell. Casey's telling him to slow it down. You can see him in the bottom left-hand portion of the screen. Wants the Orangemen to settle and make sure they get a good shot. Now, we saw against Loyola, I think the team got impatient offensively because they didn't have the ball a lot, and they took some bad, rushed shots, and they don't want to do that here. And they also want to make sure they have backup when they take a shot, so you can get a shot back. Let's see what Georgetown, little look, kind of look of a defensive uh, look. Zone sticks up. One minute mark. Syracuse in a situation where they wouldn't mind bleeding some of the clock down. They'll take a good opportunity if they can get it. It's Dark tough. Angelo thought about it. A lot of bodies in there, and it's kind of a zone, and they, they, they sink back in. It, it, we said before, it's hard to get a good look at the goal. Dark Angelo over to Ryan Powell. Casey directing traffic from right out in front of the goal. Now he drifts behind the goal. And you know, by, by controlling the faceoffs, you take Syracuse's game. Katia shot saved by Hole. With 20 seconds remaining in the third. They can't clear. Not yet, anyway. They retain possession, and then they do carry in. That is Matt Gallagher seeing some time. He lost it. Ahead to Rule. Rule looking. Long pass up to Ryan Powell. Three seconds remain. Ryan, quick pass to Casey. Casey shoots and scores, and they're going to allow the goal. As time expires in the third, Casey Powell with a goal. Syracuse with a 10-9 lead. This will be an interesting call. I guess it is a goal. They're going to check to make sure to, I guess, to see when the clock was. No goal. Oh, they're waving off. Well, the crowd was yelling. For Ryan Powell, the shoot, he thought he had time to slide a quick one to Casey. Time had just elapsed, so no goal. And Syracuse and Georgetown are knotted at nine apiece. Georgetown has come all the way back from three four-goal deficits to tie this game. Back with the fourth quarter on Super Sports right after this. We're back, Georgetown, Syracuse, 9-9. It looked like it was 10-9 moments ago. This was the long pass up ahead to Ryan Powell. You look at the clock, zero, good call. Yeah, it was clear the officials and probably the prudent thing. They let it stand at first and then reconvened to talk about it. They didn't wave it off initially, but they made sure they got it right and they clearly did get it right. So it's nine to nine. Fourth quarter upon this quarter, perhaps rests the Syracuse chances of receiving a first round bye, getting a top four seed in the NCAA tournament. Dave Yurick thinks perhaps upon this quarter rides his chances of getting into the NCAA tournament. Quick shot by Casey, save over to Kataya. And his pass attempt slides out of his stick and uh, off of number four. Oh, the main Syracuse ball. Yeah. Papa, number four, is off his stick, so Syracuse will get it back. It's back to Taya. Taya back to Ryan Powell. Syracuse looking to cut. Georgetown is extending their defense a little bit here. Taya over to Powell again. The Hoyas uh, are in a zone situation right now. 
Well, they make me, it's like basketball. Makes you take shots from the outside, and it's uh, hard to get the back up sometimes, and you got to go through a lot of potties to get to the hole, so it's a, it's a good idea. Syracuse has been patient. A minute 20 has elapsed here in the fourth. The really game tied at nine. Casey looking. And over to Ryan Powell. Back to Vanderpool. Slides one over. Quick shot, and they score. Jeff Lowe. First goal of the year. Now Jeff Lowe seeing some time out there, the football player. And Jeff Lowe, watch what he has to see. You're going to look at all those bodies. Now they're going to get it out to Lowe. They got him shifting a little bit. He's just going to put it right between. There it is. He got it between two defensemen, and he got it by the shift man who came over to pick up his stick. But you only got a certain amount of time. There's a window of opportunity, and Jeff Lowe made it up and made it good. And he got another assist from Ryan Powell. There wasn't a lot of room in there, and he just snuck it on through. And Syracuse gets a break because they haven't been doing well in faceoffs, and they get one on a call there. The tie it back to Casey Powell. Casey over to Ryan. Jeff Cordisco is out there as well as Coyone. Chris Cordisco is now going to join the attack as well. Georgetown back to the man-to-man -man defense. This is Ryan Powell with it, being guarded by Greg Papa. Casey back over to Kataya, and Kataya thought it was deflected by Rogers. Yes, Wait a minute, was. now the officials are going to get together, and one overrules the other. So we've seen a couple times where the officials have gotten together and made sure they made the correct call. Well, you see how fast this game goes, Rob. You, you've got to depend on somebody else once in a while. You cannot see everything when you've got certain calls to make, and Syracuse gets the ball back on that good call. Casey Powell to Ryan Powell now. Georgetown remains in the man-to-man -man defense. Coyone. Out to Kataya. Kataya with four goals today. Casey Powell's got a couple goals. Looked for a little while like he had a third to put Syracuse up 10 to 9. But instead, that goal came from Jeff Lowe here in the fourth. Syracuse clinging to a one goal lead. As you said, changing defenses a little bit, going from man to man to zone. They had a zone for a while to start the fourth quarter. Now they're going to double and jump. So it goes from aggressive to kind of a passive. Then you got to be able to make the adjustment. Chris Cordisco back to Ryan Powell. Ryan over to Coyone. Syracuse very patiently working it around, approaching the 12-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Ryan cutting in, quick pass, eluded him. Still out in front, Casey Powell giving chase along with Cole. Cole scrambles back into his netminder position. Casey left it there for Jeff Cordisco. Not sure if that was on purpose or not. Now Casey being guarded defensively by Matt Casson. Coyone looking, spinner. Coyone, quick low shot. And it will go back to Georgetown. Now Kataya thought he was there, but Hole hustled out from the crease, and it is ruled back to Georgetown. It's going to go Georgetown way. Hole gets the ball. He's toughened up, and they've... Done a good job defensively. Ball off down the ground. Now there's an unforced error, and that kills you. And that's Greg Papa. Couldn't handle that pass. It was on the ground. And now Syracuse, beneficiaries of that turnover, are just going to come right back. And Hole's got to say, geez, I thought we got rid of these white jerseys for a while, but they're coming right back in my face. Yeah, that sloppy play is, uh, those are the ones that, as you mentioned, really kill you because no reason for it. Just, uh, yeah, you can take it if play. somebody from Syracuse knocked it out of your hand or something. That's defense, but that was just unforced. Ryan Powell over to Casey. Out to Kataya. Kataya faking. <laughs> Had his man for a moment, but a nice job of recovering. Now Ryan to Casey. We also have Kataya out there, as we mentioned. Down low in the slot. Oh, just hammered. Race for it. And it is going to... Boy, that was uh, looking a little breakdance effort. Well, he was telling the other official that he wasn't sure. What did you see? And he gave him the he gave him the high sign. Watch, there's hole. There's the hit by Powell. See John Matthews hustling in there, and then he grabs his stick and pulls him down. Hole wants a call, but at the State Syracuse ball, as the officials once again depended on each other. There's Casey looking in as Georgetown is switched now back to the zone again. Casey's pass attempt is going to go all the way out. 
just uh, broomed back in there by Sheedy off of Syracuse. But uh, nobody pick it up for Syracuse, so yeah. the Hoyas get the ball back. Nobody went after it. That was kind of a little lapse there, I think. At any rate, uh, the Hoyas now, after making that one error, they're going to get the ball back to Syracuse. Got the ball off a stick, and it uh, didn't follow up on it, so it'll be the uh, clearing attempt of the Hoyas. There's Papa. Pop it a hole, and they are in the zone on the attack. Steve Iorio has it. Now Syracuse wants to find their defensive groove that they had before, and they don't want to be too passive because that's not. That, no, I think they want to still stay aggressive, but they don't want to make any big mistakes. This is Tyler Gamble with the ball being checked by Matt Alexander. Gamble looking, spinning. Doesn't see anything. Oh, see him pop off the out, crease. Yeah. yeah, pop way out, come out and give him help. Gamble looking, still doesn't see anything. Well, both teams extremely impatient offensively. Matthews <laughs> made a gesture looking at his wristwatch, like, are we going to play here or what? Greg Peters now has it. You see what they're doing? They're, they're just making cut after cut. They're going to get some help. Peters moves in, saved by Gephardt. Gandy. And Gephardt comes back up with the ball. Josh Rule. You can see the philosophy there was let's play good defense. Let's get back where we were before. She takes over. He's onside. And ahead to Ryan Powell. Ryan looking. He's being guarded by Roger Colbert. Ryan moves in, stops, looks. Passes over to Casey Powell. His shot goes high and wide off the stick of Matt Kataya backing up on the play, but Syracuse will retain possession. Uh, you're right. Now they're back out at that tight man-to-man, -man, way out on everybody. Instead of from a packed-in zone to an aggressive man-to-man, -man, way out on top of everybody. So another little look for Syracuse as uh, fans saw somebody coming out of the substitution area. You saw the score 10-9, to 8.45, quick dump pass to Vanderpool. Vanderpool turned the wrong way. Should have taken it. Should have turned and fired, but... That's old news in the cross. It's let's play defense now. Yeah, he didn't know he was open there as uh, Ryan was double teamed, made the correct pass, but Vanderpool spun away from the goal. And now the Hoyas get it back. On the attack, Michael Corey. Well, I think one of the things the Hoyas do, well, that's a good play. That Sheedy, great job. Held the stick down. That's going to go Syracuse way. I was just going to say that Sheedy did that great job there was the fact that what Syracuse wanted to do is still play defensively, but what Georgetown was doing was anticipating their slides, and when they are getting double teamed, they were making the good pass. So, let's see, we're going to get a call against Syracuse. I didn't, was looking on the replay, didn't see it, but it will be Syracuse ball. I don't think so. I, it, uh, I don't know just yet, but uh, I saw some of the Georgetown assistant coaches acting uh, with dismay about what the official was saying. And Ryan Powell's got the ball on his stick. That's a good sign for Syracuse. Looked like it was a substitution and fraction. So. Yes, it was. Dale, good to have you up here, bud. <laughs> Syracuse, 10-9, they lead the shots. Talk about an even game. There's an indicator right there, 33-32. 8.05 and counting now as Syracuse leads 10-9. This is an important man up now. You've got an opportunity. Quick pass, quick shot, they score. They take advantage. Brian Soliday with a goal. And Syracuse has now extended to a two-to-goal lead, a two-goal lead, a little bit of breathing room. Soliday, this is a man up. I said, you don't want to squander this kind of an opportunity. Nice pass by Ryan Powell and just got a stick on it, but I think it kind of powered its way in as whole. Let's see. Nope. Just a good shot. And I'll tell you, Ryan Powell's got a passel of assists today. He's got uh, six, six assists. Wow. Faceoffs, you can see Georgetown leading in that department. They are at the nearly critical stage right now as far as winning them. That's, uh, and it is going to remain. Uh, wait a minute. I was, was going to say it's Syracuse ball. Yes, it is Syracuse ball. Good call. See how the referees work in conjunction there? They looked up and said, you know, they all know where they got to be. I, it's really amazing that they do as well as they do in these games. 
because it, it happened so quickly and the official right there to make the make the good call. This crew's had to make some tough calls and they've yeah. made a lot of good ones today. Casey Powell over to Kataya now. As Georgetown is uh, packed back into the zone again. Ryan Powell over to Coyone. 7.30 remains. Ryan looking, moves in, ducks it behind the back. What a goal by Ryan Powell. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That was, that was kind of a zone miss. <laughs> this, uh, that shot. As he just goes right handed, goes back left handed, back right handed, and then says, Here, I'll zone this one. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is absolutely tremendous. One man does not beat his own. One goal. That's the theory, six. anyway. Yeah, right, yeah. And Ryan uh, dashing that theory. Syracuse now with a 12 to 9 lead. Now, you know what this gives them? It gives them a little more, I don't want to say recklessness defensively, but you're going to see a lot of hard checking out there. They don't want to let them back in this game, and they don't want to make a big mistake. And three goals, as you know, Rob, is not a lot. We have seen that many scored in uh, three minutes. But at least it's going to give the Syracuse a, a sense of, some sense of relief. Well, yeah, I think they are, but I think they want to play just the way they have been playing defensively, which is rough and tough. The let's go orange chant. As McCabra still looking to get on the board. Or oh, that's uh, Shea rather. Yep. Shea spinning in and shoots and scores. Very similar to the goal Shea scored earlier. Jeff Lowe checking him this time. It was Glisker before. And Shea just taking the hits, taking the hits, waiting for his moment and scored. Yep, Shea out of Hop Hog, New York, does a nice job because he's all over. But as soon as you know what he does, the reaction time is so great. And you see that as soon as he senses he's got a chance to get that stick out free, see, he sends a little separation and then he just took the shot. And you know, it's like I hold it, I hold it, I hold it. And then as soon as I get some separation from the guy or he can't get my stick, bango. Now let's see faceoffs. Once again going to be key Syracuse gets this one Deneker picks it up you're right that is key as uh, Syracuse does not want to see Georgetown getting the ball again and again and again Marshall Abrams moving in his shot is oh my goodness beating a hole for another goal well Abrams I mean he makes you nervous with that long stick out there but boy a big goal big big goal from Marshall Abrams Let's see Abrams, he makes a move. See, the problem is he had to make a move with that big pole. It's a good shot, you get a good whip. But you know, as I looked at the coaches, they weren't all laughing and smiling. I, I, I'm not sure they wanted to take that shot. It was a good shot, it was offside, and Pole couldn't get a move on. That's gonna be a push. Syracuse will get the ball back again. Hard to tell if that's just a lot of confidence from a, an emerging lacrosse star or just a sophomore making kind of a little bit of a mistake. <laughs> well, but either way, he's good enough to make up for it. When he was 2-1 and one last week, he says, geez, I, I got five now. Uh, and three in the last couple games. Casey Powell coming in. His shot goes wide. Good backup by his brother. 13-10. Offensively, Casey has not had a spectacular game. And uh, Syracuse is still leading by three without it. Well, that, see, that, Usually you see Casey Powell put that one away. That, that's important though. You know, you have to be able to win without Casey Powell and, you know, being the, the leading scorer or what have you. Because they're going to shut him off, they're going to shut him down, and you got to have other weapons. We said that before. Kutaya picked up his game in the last three or four games of the season. Absolutely. Five against Hobart, four here today so far. With 5.35 remaining. Syracuse leading Georgetown 13 to 10. Casey Powell's come way out, being guarded by Anderson Bell. He's been on him most of the time. Now to Ryan Powell. Ryan going to work on Greg Papa. So you can't, you know, when you get down like this, you can't play that zone defense, which is effective because you can't take the time to let them run around that, that uh, square there and, and take a lot of time off the clock. Ryan looking, spinning. Papa staying with him every step of the way, but I don't think Syracuse is in any particular hurry at least they shouldn't be burns moving in burn shot goes wide no backup there for syracuse and i'm not really sure i'm, I'm not sure who they're yelling at. it looks like they're yelling at uh, ryan for not being there for the backup on that play 
which is at this time of the game critical because you just don't want to give the ball back to Georgetown. Okay, you missed a shot. You took an opportunity there. It's as good as a faceoff. Yeah. You know, getting the ball back. 4.54 remains. Plenty of time left for the Hoyas to get back in the game as you see the score 13 to 10. And they are definitely in the game right now. Need a goal though, that's Hubsman with it. Now they work it around the perimeter. Greg Peters has it for the Hoyas. They trail 13 to 10. Now they're stacking up the crease. They got a 1-4-1 one, one going. Four guys down in that plane in front of the goalie and then they go to the wing. Hubsman again. Hubsman being guarded by Alexander, takes him way out, tries to go to work on him. Alexander with a good check. Look at and that a jump. double team by Seglia jumping out there. Left a little room though, and Tyler Gamble. Boy, tough shot. Moving to his right, shooting back to his left, beating Jason Gephardt down low. Well, that was a long, long oh, jump. Yeah, Watch the double team that. attempt. Look where it yeah, comes from. Goal. You're just going to see it in the right side of the screen. Well, he came a long distance, and then they didn't get body position. They could not get body position on Tyler Gamble. He turned inside, and they couldn't get on a stick, and it's 13 to 11, just like that. Face-offs, once again, the pressure goes back to the face-off circle. We talked about the jump, and uh, we had a kick there, and Georgetown's going to get it back. Talk about the jump. That's just tipping your hand too soon, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And by the way, you can kick the ball, but I, he kicked the stick, and that's what's going to cost him the uh, faceoff. And the timeout now goes to Georgetown. And you listen to this uh, crowd if they get a goal here and make it 13 to 12, this is going to go right down to the wire. It is 4:01 remaining in this game. Uh, Syracuse leading 13 to 11, and we have seen it from other people. It hasn't been Casey Powell as we talked about today, and just closing him off isn't enough. Casey Powell, I mean, according to Georgetown coach Dave Urich. Arguably, that's you know that's one of the best players to have played the game, and you got to do something you know, I think a little bit different and a little bit unique to to prepare for him. But at the same time, they got a few other people that can hurt you as well if you just devote all your attention to try and stop Casey Powell and you know, there's too many other people that can light it up uh, and we have to be aware of that too. Casey's brother and I think we're going to be hearing a lot about Ryan Powell next year. T-Vets is talking about well how do we stop Ryan Powell? Yeah they got a lot of people. That. They got a lot of people coming back. <laughs> oh one man one man beating his own. Let me just say one thing, you know, we might mention uh, Laddie Horrell, some of the assistant coaches, Devin, uh, Kevin Donahue and John Desco. You know, we talk about one guy doesn't make a team, nor does one coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, those guys, great help to coach uh, Simmons. And uh, he'd be the first to, to distribute the credit. Good point. 13-11 uh, to 11, Syracuse leads. 4-0-1 remains in the game. This is Greg McCabra. McCabra has been shut down today. The third leading scorer in the nation. Cabra trying to go to work on Sheedy. Two-goal game with 3.45 remaining. Cabra still coming in, still looking. Tries to flip one, and uh, he was just manhandled by Sheedy. Sheedy assisted him legally into the crease, and that will give you uh, that call. And uh, Sheedy just whopping him, and that is a good shove, and you see the crease violation. Syracuse gets the ball back. they are going to put a lot of pressure on. Oh, they just get the ball to Vanderpool. And Vanderpool will bring it in for Syracuse. 325 remains. Syracuse with a two-goal lead. Now you don't want to take a shot without backup, Rob. You don't want to get crazy. Make sure you know what kind of offense, who's supposed to be back there, and that they back the shot up. That's why they were hollering at Ryan Powell before, because he wasn't there for the backup on the burn shot. Now Burns has it as low checks out. And Darcangelo will come out uh, to be the last Syracuse attack man. You're going to see an aggressive defense now from Georgetown. They got to put the ball on the carpet. Right there, you can see that and hear it. When do you start? Uh, when do you start jumping out and getting the goalie out there involved as well? Well, I don't think you'll see that right away. I, I you know, it, it's only two goals, but what you want to do, you may see some double teams pretty quickly. Here's Burns. Burns pass over to Ryan Powell is, as you mentioned, on the carpet. Ryan picks it up. He's knocked into there. Ryan a little feisty after the play. Let's well, see what the call's going to be. You have to watch that. You know, if you're going to get a call coming your way, don't call it. Derek was calling a timeout there as uh, Ryan tentatively clinging to the ball. Yeah, Stepped he had on his stick. Yeah. The timeout must have come right around there. Right, right <laughs> when he had the ball on his stick because, yeah, he, he really needed to have that uh, to get the timeout, and they got it. So, uh, 
You see Roy Simmons. Be cool. Talking to the troops. Be cool. Let's just play our game. Make sure that you understand everything that we've told you. In other words, when we're going to run the offense, make sure we have backup. Make sure you know exactly where you're supposed to be. If the ball's on the carpet, we got to get people on it. Don't give a fast break. They got to come back and get in position. We have played 57 minutes and 28 seconds of this game. And the only thing we've talked about All-American Greg McCaver is how he has been shut down. For Georgetown to win this game, it's possible he's got to come up with a big moment down the stretch. He's an athlete. Sometimes you uh, run into kids that have a great stick and they're maybe a little slight. Some kids maybe a little faint-hearted. Uh, he's got the whole package. He does it all. He sticks his nose in there. And He's physically tough and he's a cross head. And Kevin Sheedy has been up to the task today, to say the least. Look at this dogging Macabre. And we're not talking about a uh, ham and egger he's dogging here. We're talking about one of the best players in the country. Did and, a nice uh, job. Pushed him, right pushed yeah. him right in the crease. Pushed him right in the crease legally. Only one assist today. That's a great job by Sheedy and the Syracuse defense. He averages, uh, as we take a look, 13 to 11, 220 remaining in the game. Averages. Better than five, it's five and a quarter combination goals and assists a game. So to hold them down to one is remarkable. And Syracuse now, when it gets under two minutes now, they're, they're going to have to keep the ball in the box there. Kutai running all over the place. Bad pass. Tried to get it to Casey Powell. Burns hustling down, scoops it up. Oh, good hustle by Burns. One now they got to keep it in the box. they got to keep it in the box. If they touch the line, they're going to lose possession. Lofting pass to Casey Powell. Casey looking. Anderson Bell on him. Casey sweeping around. Spins back the other way. Comes in. Yeah, Whirls he, around again. They just want to take the time off the clock. Over to Ryan again. Down to the 130 mark left in the game. Syracuse leading 13 to 11. They'll put him one-on-one -on -one back there all day. He'll just run back and forth. Uh, eventually, they'll either have to double team him or they're going to have to try to shut him off. Got Kutaya back there. See, Kutaya now steps back. And now they're going to really have to go after him hard. There's Kutaya. There's the goalie. He's ridden hard by Colbert. Goal, the goaltender comes out. Kutaya looking. Being checked hard by the goalie. And uh, Kutaya just finds the open net. Well, Cole had to come out. Kutaya with his fifth of the game with 104 remaining. Well, Brian Hole came out. Maybe went a little too far, but he didn't have any help in back. Nobody came up to take him. Now, the defensive man standing in there can't do much, and uh, that's going to do it for Syracuse at 104. But Hole trying to check Kutaya, and uh, he didn't get any help. Somebody else should have picked him up. He should have been able to drop him and go back in the cage. But look at this. Oh we talked goodness. about he's come up the last four games, 12 goals, three assists. That was a critical faceoff for the Warriors if they had any hopes of a miraculous comeback. They didn't win it. Now here's Jeff Lowe. You know, they're definitely a playoff team as far as all the teams that I've seen play in here. This is as good a team of I, as I have seen. Matthews scrambling for it. Flag on the play as he is shoved down, and it's going to go back to Syracuse. You know, I think that's a good point because Syracuse is playing their best lacrosse of the season right now. They manhandled Massachusetts and destroyed Hobart. Two yep. very good teams. Two teams that uh, will probably, uh, Hobart's uh, in some trouble, but certainly NCAA contenders. Yeah. And Georgetown comes in here and, uh, and gives Syracuse all they wanted. With 37 seconds left in the game, they trail just by three. Uh, they're not going to win today, but the Hoyas, I think, maybe have gotten themselves into the tournament by a strong showing. Well, yeah, if, you, if a strong showing counts for anything, this would certainly put them over the, uh, put them over the edge. And Syracuse had just played very, very well. There was one, one period there where they gave up that four goals on four shots. And they had to be thinking a little bit about their confidence, but they got it back. And uh, they managed to win when it counted. Casey just playing keep away now. Ducking himself back into the corner. Six seconds remains. Five seconds remain. Casey Powell's going to play his last game in the Carrier Dome, and it's going to be a win as he unleashes one up towards the ceiling. He is going to be congratulated and hugged by his teammates, the seniors coming over as well. Roy Simmons uh, can breathe a sigh of relief. The Hoyas came in and gave Syracuse all they wanted.
but the Orangemen will exit the dome with a victory today. Great game, great lacrosse game. So Syracuse beats Georgetown. Final score was 14 to 11. Back with some final thoughts in the game right after this. Syracuse lacrosse is brought to you in part by Brian Lacrosse. The Syracuse Orangemen beating Georgetown. Final score today, 14 to 11. A terrific game. And joining us is Coach Roy Simmons and Coach. You jumped out to four goal leads, uh, first four nothing, and you had them three times during the game, four goal leads, but the, the Hoyas really bounced back and hung in there. Well, they're, they're a great team. Their record shows that, and uh, I think this is a relatively new series, and I think like any Georgetown-Syracuse game, it's going to be uh, one of the best games of the year every year. Talk a little bit about uh, matchup. We thought she did a great job on McCabra. It was just, uh, I think he held unofficially up here anyway, one assist, and uh, he just did a great job. Well, we knew uh, we, we were playing a class attack, man, and we think uh, Kev, we're all Kevin Sheedy. We gave him a challenge. You know, he's a senior. He's going out. Today was his last day at home, and uh, he was on a mission, and uh, he got the job done. Uh, he loves the challenge. Jason Gephardt, coach, has just been playing terrific lacrosse, probably his best of the season in the last three games. He was brilliant against Massachusetts and Hobart and came up with some big saves as well today. Yeah, Jason's uh, turned over a new leaf here. He's uh, working twice as hard. He's focused. Uh, we're playing during the day. I think that has a little bit of something to do with it. I think the defense uh, uh, believes in him, and uh, you know he, he's seeing the ball well. You know, he's probably working two, two and a half hours more each day uh, than he did in the past, and uh, he's uh, still overcoming. You know, carrying that big metal brace on his leg, and God bless him. Uh, what he's been through and what he's carrying on the field, you don't see it. Kind of the sweatpants, but he does a terrific job. Coach, congratulations. Did you say anything to the guys when it looked like uh, they were going to come back? Uh, there was a timeout at one point, and I saw you no. talking to them. No, we, well, we talked to them, but we never talked. We, our, our strongest thoughts are uh, we expect to win, and your dominant thoughts always uh, seem to surface. And uh, if it's boiled down to a 10-minute ball game instead of a 60-minute ball game, uh, I'll put my money on the orange. Uh, we get tough when the going gets tough. Coach, another terrific season, and uh, I guess you wait around now to see what happens in the NCAA tournament. Uh, Ten and two is one of the better records in the country, and uh, we weren't too far off the mark on the two losses we had. And, uh, I think head-to-head -head, uh, against Virginia and Hopkins are highly ranked teams now, even now, and, the, and having Loyola on the ropes for most of the game. Uh, and they're a very highly ranked team with only one loss, and uh, Princeton, Maryland with one loss. I, I think that a fair committee sits down tomorrow at, at 4.30, um, I think uh, the cream will come to the top. If it doesn't, we'll play another game, that's all. And uh, we're in the playoffs with one of the best records that we've had in a long time, and uh, we're consistent. Coach, thanks for another great season. Best of luck in the postseason. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Coach Roy Simmons, and uh, you saw the heart on his chest, Casey Powell. Yeah. Number 22, thanks for the memories, and uh, boy, he's provided too. some great ones. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, the Syracuse Orangemen beating Georgetown by the score of 14 to 11 today. There's the big poster. Thanks, Casey Powell, for the memories. One of the greatest players of all time. For Dale Drypolcher and for all the Super Sports staff, thanks for joining us today. I'm Rob King. We'll see you down the line.